Hi, my name is Jason Dombrowski and I'm the Collection Manager for the Cornell University Insect Collection and the Coordinator for the Insect Diagnostic Lab. In this short video, we're going to look at horntails and, and specifically focus on some of the invasive species that are established here or could potentially become established here. First of all, horntails are a group of hymenopterans, which are the ants, bees, wasps, etc. And they can be separated from most other wasps in that they've got a very thick waist, whereas most other wasps have a very narrow wasp waist to them. Horntails get their name from the horn projection at the very end of the abdomen, both sexes, and the females have the additional bit of having an ovipositor at the end of the abdomen. Uh, as well just below the horn. This first species is called Cyrex noctilio. It's been established in northeastern North America for several years now and is spreading. It feeds on various species of pine and the female will lay eggs inside wood and inject a fungus. The wasp larvae then burrow inside the wood where they feed on fungi. Another species to watch for is Tremex fusicornis, which has already been introduced into Chile from China and could potentially be introduced into North America. This species feeds on a variety of hardwood trees and just like the previous species, Cyrex noctilio, the females inject eggs inside the tree with their ovipositor and a fungus as well for them to feed on. Horntails do best on stressed trees, although they can attack living healthy trees as well. These two species are parasitoids of horned tails, and if you see them around, it's a good indication that you might have horned tails as well. The one on the left is Nick Pneumonid wasp, and the one on the right is an Iboleid wasp, and both are close associated with horned tails. In both species, the larvae live inside the larva of the horned tail, and they slowly devour the inside of it, uh, and eventually kill it in the end. It can be important biocontrol agents for it. Now both of these horn tails that we've talked about today are very similar to some of our native species and you typically need a microscope to separate the two of our, them from our, our native species. If you ever think that you might have one of these invasive species, send it into your nearest diagnostic lab to have them confirm the identification.